song we're checking out today is Prairie Wedding pretty the pretty requested song I must say and so the inspiration for this song uh, for my video comes from this gentleman here and I just saw this video in my recommendations because I get recommended Mark Knopfler stuff all the time but I got this and so that was another time when I thought, well, I need to learn it. And so I learned it. <laughs> but anyway, it's great to see more people actually enjoying and trying to play Mark Knopfler's stuff because I'm, I'm pretty sure this music will be more and more popular and more, even more popular. Just, just amazing songs. And that's coming from somebody who learned hundreds of songs. <laughs> So I know what I'm talking about and so I just wanted to learn this track and I already uploaded the solo for this song which is just like it, it's written here sweetest solo ever it's pretty sweet and I love it and so I uploaded it a pretty a pretty solo but because I have a capo here and finally a song in standard tuning and but still with a capo, so <laughs> here is that. And this song is actually pretty, um, what I call beginner uh, friendly, because it's not a song for the beginner, it's just beginner friendly. That's my kind of a word for it. But anyway, yeah, hello everybody. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's standard tuning and so I actually have a lot to say about this song and this song Prairie Wedding uh, this song sounds more it sounds easier than it really is and so anyway this song reminds me of all this um, do you know the song by Tommy Emmanuel called um, Lewis and Clark stuff like this and uh, it, it actually also gets me back to video game music like Fallout. In Fallout music you had this track in Fallout 2. Uh, this is how old I am by the way. I know Fallout 2 and that's the last Fallout I, I ever played. But anyway, in this tune it's in drop D tuning. But it, it also has some same kind of vibe to pray the wedding and of course Tommy Manuel's Lewis and Clark is a masterpiece on its own and it, it all these songs they evoke this I don't know um, 19th century America and prairies like uh, the title suggests so all this song evokes this feeling I don't know how also how to describe it but also this song actually reminds me of uh, the song Iron Hand from the On Every Street album, which, which was something like... But not, on, not because of the picking or patterns or stuff like that. It reminds me of this song because of this um, kind of a grip overall shape so this is this huge um, P minor 
mm -hmm. uh, chord, including the lower bass note, so regular B minor is like that, and I also include the, this bass note, and it makes this huge B minor sound, and in Prairie Wedding, actually, it's an interesting song because um, the chords in it are actually not major or not minor so it's not it's like a, it's a, it's like a completely model song in the sense that it's it, it, i can't really pinpoint the key <laughs> this song is in because all the chords are basically suspended or power chords for instance this one is is again is like b minor except for this for this note and it makes it actually be sus but again I also include this note here which makes it sound great this low note resonating anyway it's actually frets 2 2 4 4 2 and 2 and there are four chords in the song so the next one is the same thing two fret down two frets so open open two two open open which is again a suspended chord because it's like a major with open with open B and so again a suspended chord with this additional bass again for this great 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 low bottom and only two chords left actually which is this one again a suspended one so it's D sus basically D sus 2 uh, muted 6th string 5th open open 4 2 3 open um, and my favorite is the E5 here because again it's not a major not minor so it's, it's it has to be uh, you can't you can't play like that because it's actually it's too bright and it won't suit the song at all because it's just too bright. So what I do is I pick um, the power chord on the bottom and a, a great thing about it is I actually I add this fretted uh, B note because that's the same note as the open second string but I add it, add it fretted and what it does is again the whole chord is open two two four fret open open these two strings at the same time uh, they give this great great amazing almost like i don't know how how to compare it but something like 12 string guitar or mandolin-esque type of sound so it's and again uh, the greatest thing, thing about it is that all four chords are actually they are like a full uh, six string chords or again adding this six string Yeah, this, all these chords are not major or, or, and not minor, but the beauty of this song is actually in the melody that Marx is singing. Uh, he makes uh, all the chords major just by singing. So for instance, for the first chord, na, 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 it's actually... 
it's a major note of this particular chord. So he, he's making this B suspended chord uh, major. But it's not in the guitar. In the guitar it's a natural sounding chord. Uh, and it happens throughout the whole song. So for the first chord is B. Uh, Dun, dun. Again, the guitar is neutral, that the voice line makes this chord major. So, la, 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 open open it's basically a power chord even for that you can hear in the melody with backing singers uh, the, it actually hits the a uh, this g sharp or whatever but it hits it and so it makes uh, this chord major as well so and including d so again that's a great uh, great party trick for this song so all the chords in the guitar are in neutral so no major no minor but the vocal melody makes all the chords major i don't know if you want i think you can find some theories about that and maybe plausible theories but it's what it is Now, another beautiful thing about this song is, is how it um, reminds me of something. So, when I play this, I already told you about this um, bottom note. So what it makes is, it makes this almost, again, almost power chord quality about it. So it's... And and especially e, e e chord because that's straight up power chord so on the bottom you have this power chord and powerful powerful de delivery but on the top end you actually have this beautiful beautiful strumming because it's, it's basically and the fourth chord for instance uh, again one of my favorite places is this uh, little vamp on E5 because it's basically what it is. It's not major, it's not minor, it's E5. And so it sounds like. Huge sound. And again, having this quality of 12 string in it. Yeah, I'll read the comments. Yeah, hello everybody. Yeah, I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, the, all my live streams are saved, so don't worry. I'm not sure about your comment about uh, based Russian. I don't know what you mean. So, could you please elaborate a little bit? So yeah, I, I went through the chords of Prairie Wedding. It's four chords. And I have a list of things to discuss here. Because again, I can go on, go, go on and on talking about these things. So yeah, the one possible variation I, I can come up with for this song uh, is uh, 
in one of the parts. You can actually go through this A suspended through, through this basically through E major uh, because again it's so something like that so That may be the only major chord entry in this whole song because as I said it's all it's all neutral chords which makes it basically a model tune because it, it it's not key centered or or whatever and the most peculiar thing about this song actually is the rhythm because I call songs like that um, kind of songs where lyrics dictate the music. In, in other words, um, they sound easy, easier than they really is, is because um, they sort of go around the words and um, frame the words. The songs like Matchstick Man or I. I I played some other songs of this of this quality and again it's all about the words and what it means is that there is some major rhythm time changes which sounds it sounds it's it all sounds ridiculous when you actually trying to think about it but again if you want to play this song completely and if you want to to play the song on on it on your own and not just double, double in it, and I mean play completely and play as composer intended and play uh, just like on the record basically. You need to study the rhythm and that's probably the most important thing you can actually learn because it's a fundamental thing again and for this song it means this. So for instance for the intro what we have is is this thing. So I already told you about the E5 chord, but for the intro it actually goes So you may notice here the D suspended chord lasts for three beats. So it's four four, four beats, three beats and then two bars uh, with four beats and so if I play it it sounds like two, two, do, do, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Simple but the verse is, is a little bit more complicated than that. So that's for the intro basically three four four bars and one three four bar okay, by the way I also love how this chord this E5 chord when it goes to the D suspended it, it actually has this common open E E string so it sounds it also adds this additional layer of of beauty and also while I'm still here you can actually go through this uh, E5 back to this B sus by keeping the little finger here so using it like an anchor of sorts so again especially in the part where it gets so 
So again, for, for when it changes from B to E, it's possible to use it as an anchor, this little finger. But back to the rhythm, um, when we start talking about the verse, it becomes a little bit trickier. But again, it's it's all beginner friendly, so it's not like a hardcore uh, rocket physics uh, stuff. It's it, it's again, it's pretty it's it's a pretty simple but fundamental stuff, and you just need to understand it. So when when it comes to the uh, verse, it starts. Uh, <laughs> So you may notice that it, it has this a little unsettling quality about it, just because it just keeps switching time signatures all the time. And for the verse, the chords are changing, but the time stays basically, again, basically in this configuration, which is 2-4 uh, followed by 4-4. Four, four. In other words, 1-2-1-2-3-4-1-2-3-4. One, two, one, two, three, four. One, two, one, two, three, four, and so on. That's that's the main idea of this. So it's it's like you're you're walking, 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 and then just like stumble <laughs> and then walk again. So it has this quality about it, which is a little bit unsettling, but it's for the reason. It's just to make it more interesting. And the important thing is that, again, chord changes in the sense that here is 2-4 uh, in B suspended, and then 4-4 four, four with A suspended, and so on. So it gets, but anyway, uh, enough with that, let's go next. So what you have next is where it gets a little bit more complicated but uh, again it's all doable it's all uh, the main thing again is two four 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 two four 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 it's just one single um thing here so this um this particular uh bar here is the only difference so if you can see this one and this one is just like uh, we saw before so it was two, four, one, two, one, two, three, four. Here it repeats just like, just like, just like here. So again, uh, two, four, 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 and on the bottom as well, two, four, and four, four, and one additional two, four bar right in the middle, and it sounds like that. One, two. One, two, three, four. One, two, one, two, one, two, three, four. And again, without mistakes, it would be one, two, one, two, three, four. One, two, one, two, one, two, three, four. So it sort of it keeps this um, two, four, four, four theme but it adds just a little this again this one single changing bar and so but for the most part again it's just two four followed by four four and the end of the verse is again two one two three four one two one two three four and it sounds again it sounds uh, harder than it really is and for songs like this as I said they sort of um, follow the lyrics and so once you know the song enough and once you played the song enough and played along the record you can sort of get used to this ever-changing time signatures and so in the final thing it sounds and looks something like that and by the way the chords are in description and it's much easier to follow the chord believe me and so again you can see here the time signature for instance 2-4 and 4-4 four, four. 
and that's the verse here. So what we have here is this. One, two, one, two, three, four. One, two, one, two, three, four. Repeat. One, two, one, two, three, four. One, two, one, two, three, four. One, two, one, two, three, four. One, two, one, two, one, two, three, four. One, two, one, two, three, four. One, two, one, two, three, four. And it actually it's pretty beautiful in the, in the way that uh, in any song, uh, Mark's song, where you stumble across this changing rhythm signature, it always ends up being this pretty standard and common 16 bar thing or 16 beats thing. So it's not like he's breaking any, any rules in particular here. It's just a rearrangement of, a little rearrangement of beats which ends up in a perfect song and so um, but you can you can actually count I, I know it's not like a academic approach to it and I, I'm sure you can count it something like 6-4 or whatever but my my explanation here and my the way I wrote it write it down it makes more sense in the learning process because it's easier to count to two and four and so I think it makes it easier to learn and so that's the part about about the rhythm and I'll I'll read read the comments here Привет из Харькова, привет из Турции Yeah, I uh, this thing all my all my live streams are are recording straight on YouTube so you will be able to check it out later. So, yeah, that's the, that was the rhythm. And the strumming pattern for this song is sort of again it's in, in essence, it's a, it's a pretty straightforward and simple thing, and just you can't get any more simple than bass, downstroke, bass, downstroke, bass, downstroke. And in this song, you can actually alternate between bass notes, so it becomes becomes something like again because uh, we're using here the whole neck except for the D5 one, D5 chord. For all the rest it's and for the E5 by the way. So bass down stroke, bass down stroke. Also one of the easiest riff uh, in the Mark's whole catalog because I, I noticed somebody wrote to me like give me the 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 riff and I know I, mean, I can't play it in, in, in with the capo on the first fret but it sounds like again uh, going for the open G note, but, but again, it's one of the easiest uh, riffs that is. And uh, because why I why I'm calling the song like this beginner friendly because you can actually play it like that. So no thumb over the top required, and this is not the hardest song in existence or wherever. And these chords are pretty simple. And the rhythm is pretty straightforward, and the rhythm changes are also pretty much beginner friendly. Is like uh, I would call it because they simple. Again, it's simplicity. It's not. Uh, it's minimalistic in that way. So it's not like crazy uh, 
15 16 or something something like that is it's simple is beautiful and the beauty is in, in the simplicity simple doesn't mean primitive it's my my position on a lot of Marx songs because they are simple in the beautiful in the, in the most beautiful way Привет. Yeah, so that's pretty much the whole, all I, I wanted to say about this little song. Again, it's, a, it's not, a, not the hardest song on the planet, but boy, it's a beautiful one. And I know people used that song for weddings because it's, it, it says Prairie Wedding in the title, so it makes sense, so why not? And it may be an underrated song, but Mark has 200 of underrated songs. Um, so I talked about the rhythm, I talked about the strumming, about my inspirations. Yeah, so... And again, even if I just play the chords, as I said that I'm using this all all six string, not like that. I'm not playing like. I'm using the whole neck. So it's actually played it live it's not something that happens with <laughs> a lot of his underrated songs but anyway that's all I wanted to say and that's actually an example of what I'm actually teaching because that's almost one-to-one -one repeats one of the lessons I just had and you can just write to me to my email address I I'll, all the information is here so I'm I'm having a, bl a blast teaching and it's just a, the happiest the, the best decision I think what I did is just to try teaching and it's so much fun it just <laughs> it's unbelievable so yeah all the, all the information is here if you want to support me you can support me by donations or by membership which is a great thing because it enables me to actually live and I'm you actually saving my life so I'm able to continue living literally uh, by your uh, either me giving you lessons or recording videos or you subscribing uh, on the nation platforms or memberships so yeah I have a blessed teaching and it's just it's just too much fun and so many laughs and jokes so yeah I hope you enjoyed it